recorded so all of our helpful people in the community can know that that's done. Now, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sharon Whiteman. Uh, it's my great pleasure and privilege to host this call weekly with Diana Hunter and Gary Knapp. We've been doing it for lots of years now and it's while, you know, it's for obvious benevolent reasons, it's also for selfish reasons. It supports us. I'm weekly inspired. I keep my education to the top level as much as I can. This week, we're very privileged to have Jenny Messenger. She's the new executive director, the corporate leader for Manatech Australasia. She's got an absolute devotion to growing businesses, developing teams, coaching and mentoring individuals to realize their potential. Jenny has forged a longstanding career within the Australian direct selling industry. She brings a wealth of experience gained from a diverse number of companies driving growth with enthusiasm and energy to inspire and innovate. Jenny firmly believes that her ability to manage change effectively has been crucial to her success and that the role she's undertaken. She lists her highlights as being published in the New York Times by one company as being responsible for exceptional sales and consultant growth in recent years and also being able to contribute as a board member to the Direct Selling Association of Australia and subsequently serving a term as chair. Jenny is driven and excited by having opportunity and challenge to help others realize their true potential with one of her favorite quotes being, success just isn't what you want accomplished in your life, but about what you inspire others to achieve. So Jenny, you've recently toured, uh, you met with as many people as humanly possible to you know, meet them personally. Welcome to our great region. We, we're very appreciative. Thank you, Sharon. I'm excited to be on this call this morning. So um, let's go back to the beginning. I know I had the opportunity to meet with you in Brisbane and um, I've had several messages from people who didn't, you know, whatever reason was happening in their life, even if there might've been, they might've been close to a, a capital city or a, a meeting that happened, they had things they couldn't make it. So they're very grateful. So I'd like to replicate as much as possible our experience that we had in those individual meetings. So one of the first things you started with was um, how you made the decision to come to Manatech. How did, how did we get you? <laughs> well, I don't know. That's probably a short story long, Sharon. I guess uh, there was a time that then uh, with my last position, I needed to spend a bit more time uh, to support my husband. And, um, you know, being a, an MD of a company is a very responsible and full on. So I thought it was time to take a step back. And uh, that was a decision we made. And then the DSA reached out to me and said, we, um, we would like still to have you um, in the arena, Jenny. How about becoming a supplier member um, so that you uh, have the opportunity to support and help start up companies um, maybe in a project management role so that you do have time with your husband but also you're still engaged and that really intrigued me so yes I became a, a supplier member sort of in my own business as a coach uh, and because of that it obviously went out through the associate members and I got a couple of phone calls and um, I guess I could say the rest is history but uh, I ended up having a, a chat with Chris Simons and it was his passion about supporting this region, uh, about the product um, that really got me engaged. So I did some research um, and the more I got uh, to understand the technology, the research and development behind the product range, the patents you had, I thought, oh my gosh, this is an amazing product. And with respect, I hadn't tried it up until then, but I'm a full on convert now. Um, <laughs> and uh, then I looked at, um, I guess, some of the history, uh, some of which I knew um, the um, challenges the company had faced because that all happened while I was a member of the Direct Selling Association board and as you mentioned later, chair, Sharon. Um, and so I actually saw that there was still a strong commitment in the field with those that were still uh, committed to, to Manatech, to the product, to the company, the loyalty. Uh, that inspired me. And then I had a look at the compensation plan and yes, again, uh, understand the challenges as some changes were rolled out. But I saw that as another amazing product, you know, in the product category to promote the business. So to me, suddenly there was a lot of things that, you know, just like a jigsaw puzzle, you have to bring them together and create the bigger picture. And I wanted to be part of that picture. So I accepted the challenge, which, you know, let's be realistic. It's a big gig. 
Uh, and um, Chris has given me um, a lot of key points that he wants to see uh, have impact. And um, here I am. So sorry, short story long, but I'm excited to be part of the team. Fantastic. And I think all of us who are on the call who've had the privilege of meeting Chris can identify with what you're saying that he really has, you know, like Al, his heart and soul is for the field and mm -hmm. he really champions us and, and we're very grateful for his in our region um, and we'll do our best to make it worth his while and your while, Jenny. Thank you very much. I mean, as I said, I'm very excited about the opportunity of us working together now. Um, you know, I'm not a silver bullet. It's going, we're going to get some great results by um, working together, creating a working in partnership relationship, um, identifying areas that we can um, improve and change. I've got a big shopping list from that um, round trip you mentioned, Sharon, of uh, people being open and transparent and honest with me. And I, I love that. Uh, you know, yes, a shopping list of things that they would like to see happen. Some I can do fairly quickly. Others are going to take some time, but we're working on them one at a time. Yeah, you know, my sense was uh, from our meeting was that it's a real partnership, a real genuine partnership. And I think everybody will rise to that. So one of the other things that I thought was important that we always love to hear at Manatech is that, is that you shared with us some of the perspective of your colleagues in the Direct Selling Association on Manatech and, and their regard for Manatech. Can you let the greater community know about that? Well, yes. Um, you know, when I started to, I guess, put it out there that um, I was now going to be part of the team, I had feedback from, um, I'm going to say all over the world, because my previous two roles have given me connections in, in many countries. And um, I was getting the thumbs up. I was getting told, you know, what great product. Um, and the more I shared what I wanted, the more they were giving me support. So when you hear that from your colleagues, not just those that are within the Manatech business platform, but those who are in the direct selling arena, you know, um, telling me what a great product range. And I know now of several GMs who are actually taking Manatech product. I, and that intrigued me because, um, you know, I love transparency. And it was like, uh, please don't send you any names because maybe I should be taking something else but, <laughs> and I'm not going to say any more than that. But to me, that was a validation that, um, you know, the product range stands head and shoulders above a lot of others in the current marketplace. And there is some competition. I think when Manatech first uh, launched here, probably, you know, there wasn't the competition that we are facing now in the health and wellness arena uh, with a, a variety and a range of products. So, to have what I consider now one of the best, um, wow, you know, what an opportunity. If not the it best, is. I say. <laughs> wow, can't go a day without our glycans, that's for sure. And, and <laughs> you know, I think if, if we could all see each other on this call, I think there's over 50 of us, mm. um, we'd be nodding our heads to say that everybody on the planet, anybody that's breathing needs nutritional glycans. And so we've got a mission at hand. Isn't it amazing, though, how I'm already getting a sense, and correct me if you think I'm wrong, that it's as though Manatech was really ahead of the time to some degree. They were promoting this amazing new technology that people were a little bit hesitant about in, you know, in the wider community. Um, but now I'm hearing professors giving presentations on glyconutritionals. I'm reading articles about um, some of the key um, industry cosmetic uh, players are now adding elements to that into their skincare range. I mean, you know, wow, well, you know, we've now got to make sure we've got traction and we keep ahead of the game. Absolutely. I got goosebumps um, listening to you say that we, we were, we are ahead of the game. We still are, mm. um, but science is catching up to us and they've had to sort of swallow some humble pie really, haven't they? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so I know that you've raised a few companies before us, you know, what, what did you see in, you know, sort of, I'm not, don't want to call it a turnaround, but in exponential growth, what did you see really worked for those companies? Um, I guess something I'm very passionate about and in both of those companies was creating the community within the company. Um, look, 
don't get me wrong, I love friendly competition. I think teams competing with each other in a friendly way um, is great. But what really gives a company standout strength is when everybody is celebrating together, everyone is enjoying each other's success, and we have um, a very supportive environment that we can be proud of. So it's almost like that creates um, an energy that other people want to be part of. The thing that I think is missing today with respect to social media, it's almost making people antisocial. And when they can see a work, uh, a working community that people are enjoying what they're doing, having fun, celebrating together, they want a part of that. And that actually drives um, growth from the critical mass level from, you know, and then out of that um, critical mass joining the company, you get those few who want leadership and start working towards leadership. Not everybody wants leadership, but that um, base foundation of as many, um, let's call associates within the community is a very powerful force indeed. Fantastic. And, you know, a combination for, of this question, you know, what have you seen so far in the field that comes to light and what's your vision for our region? Uh, I guess, let me just revert back to Saturday because to me that was the first opportunity I had of uh, standing in front of a, a larger group and promoting the key elements that I think are important within the business. You know, that's the people and the passion and we've already started to talking about that. And when you start bringing those elements together, um, then the magic happens. And I see that we've got that um, in bucket loads, can I say, um, but we just need to enhance it and keep working on it. The passion's there. Um, we've got to encourage um, the growth through people working together. Fantastic. And you had a particular targets for growth, didn't you, Jenny? Like you're looking at double digit growth or 10% or? Well, I'm going to say double digit growth and um, it's going to be interesting. I'm, I'm wondering if Chris is sitting on the call. No, I'm only joking. There's one um, phone call. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess uh, what I actually shared with him, uh, that fact that knowing the heights that Manatech reached before, and we can learn from that, um, the fact that this company has done it once doesn't mean to say we can't do it again. I think it's now time to embrace a new generation. We've got the experience, we've got um, the senior leadership, um, and I'm not talking about age, I'm talking about length of time in the business, so to bring their experience into the business platform, to actually, and they've celebrated, you guys have celebrated amazing trips, you've celebrated amazing successes, amazing growth, I think now with that experience to share that with the next generation of leaders, um, second level leaders, uh, and we can engage those new people to drive strong businesses based on now what is achievable. What does it do? It elevates the existing leadership anyway. So no, it's a win-win situation for everybody. It is, isn't it? It's fantastic. Yeah. Yes. So growth um, and your, your Connect 5 event, so I, there's quite a few people I'm scanning who's here today wouldn't have had the opportunity to be there. Did you want to expand a bit on, on what happened on that day? Well, it was one a, of the foundations for you, isn't it? It was a... Yes, uh, I wanted to run it as a pilot group. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, excuse me one moment. It's water, promise, not gin and tonic. <laughs> we'll have to do one in the evening for one, do one of our fi fun ones. <laughs> Too early for gin and tonic. I wanted to do the opportunity to put some thoughts my, uh, and bring together some past experiences on a platform that I thought would resonate with Manatech. I looked at what I, th I thought was the five key principles of the business, which is the people, the passion, the product, the programs, um, and, you know, the possibility. So we rolled that out um, to the audience showing, you know, those five things are key to a successful business and we have them already within the company. And then in the afternoon was really to reinforce the possibility, which is the growth opportunity for Manatech. So I feel that's very important. And it's given me now um, the opportunity. We've just rolled out a survey. I want some feedback from those who participated. Then to, uh, I guess my next opportunity is the uh, MBA, the Manatech Business Academy. I want to take the learnings to that, to that group, look at what we can do the same, what we can do different, and then really make sure it's a really good fit 
and then roll it out to what I call white spot development areas. That's areas where we've got um, associates already and leaders who are keen to build. And um, one I call white spot, to me that's hot, ready for development and growth uh, and take it to a wider audience. I think the next, um, because we're getting close to the end of the year and I'm excited, but a team of one at the moment, um, I probably will hang some of those elements off of the JP Costa Roadshow. So, you know, we've got um, JP Costa coming in to do a roadshow. And I think to really maximize that opportunity to a wider audience, um, have a precy or a summary of the Saturday um, event um, so that we can get to as many cities as we can and then maybe revert back in 2020 doing more white spot development. But it's all in the mix at the moment, Sharon. It's about um, what's going to get us the best results in the shortest time, supporting the, um, the existing leadership and inspiring the new leadership to drive maximum results. So that's my focus. Oh, excellent. And it's very... Um people-based, isn't it? Like connecting with the people and your ability to be, you know, that sort of a combination of deeply honest and empathetic at the same time, you know, you know what works. You can be very directive at the same time. It's a quite a, it's a beautiful combination. Well, yeah, I mean, to me, uh, you know, the people, people, uh, this is a people industry. Um, yes, we, uh, within the association, you have different platforms, different ways of reaching out. But at the end of the day, this business is all about people. It's connecting with people. It's uh, relating to people at different levels. Um, and I use the hand um, because to me, um, that's another form of how we connect. We, um, we wave or we handshake or we give a high five. Um, so, you know, to me, um, connecting um, and to being authentic you know, no one's perfect. We had some fun on Saturday and we had a few slip ups. But at the end of the day, um, we, in, I believe, celebrated together. We enjoyed the day together. And to me, that that was really important. We had we had a really good day and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, I've heard overwhelming praise for it. People just loved being there. Thank you. Hmm. So one of the other things you mentioned was. You know, I know there's some teams in our in our region that are you know like James and, and Naomi are really strong on social media but you want to expand that through our whole region and make things simple and one of the things you mentioned which caught my attention was the virtual parties or virtual presentations where people because some people you know they want to have a home business but they want to go out every night or they have families or whatever reason and you've also brought this initiative of the Women's Health Week out, um, which I think is fabulous. So, you know, our collective team that we're working with, we're working on a, a virtual uh, meeting for that week right now. And it, I think it adds another element of potential to for the greater region. Um, is, what's your, been your experience? I know you've worked with women, coached women, and it can be very successful. Tell us more about that. Okay, well, just to revert um, back, I think... Uh, James and Naomi have obviously spearheaded the social media arena. And look, I think uh, social media is a great tool and a great asset uh, to connect and reach out to people. So uh, I would like to encourage others to use the form, the medium, just like we are doing today. We wouldn't be able to have this engagement and this opportunity to chat without utilizing mm -hmm. social media. So if those that have so far been a bit wary of reaching out, think about how you can uh, reach out to a group um, of your own downline by doing a um, product in focus, for example, making it very easy. Talk about something you're very passionate about to build your conference uh, confidence and start that um, opportunity to connect with people. And I guess then the second point, why with the past company, we went down the virtual party arena was... Um, people seem to be more time poor. And I'm sorry, I'm going to take a little while to go through this one, Sharon, based on your question there. Um, obviously, party attendance was dropping, um, people too busy, time poor. But suddenly, if you are able to say on Thursday night, we're going to open a live broadcast, we're going to do X product in focus and uh, reach out to um, someone in your downline to open it up, to invite 
guests in so you can actually have people there from oh no boundaries um, local or interstate sitting at home in their slippers enjoying dare I say a glass of wine um, as though they were at a party listening to the product now yes two different product lines but with Manatech with the uh, opportunity to as I say do a product in focus have it there get engagement on the call, ask questions, um, ask for uh, or offer, I should say, the opportunity for one-on-one -on -one, um, chats, consultation, get some engagement happening. Suddenly it opens up a whole new avenue of business opportunity. And I think that's the key um, for like, like we're doing today, people can You've opened the chat line, so those who are listening to you can ask questions about the product, can ask questions uh, about, you know, uh, are you coming to my town? Can I see you? Can I talk to you? Here's my mobile number. The objective of going virtual is to create a platform of uh, contacts that it's not just a live performance or a live chat, it's an opportunity in the following weeks still to run a business at home, phoning people and, and giving them the opportunity to order products. And uh, I'm, I'm sure some people will be hesitant and it won't always be perfect the first time they try it, but have fun. Doesn't matter if mistakes are made, be authentic, but build your skill set and your experience so that you feel comfortable. You're feeling comfortable with doing this now, Sharon, because you've done it so many times. <laughs> So I want to encourage people to get to your level of confidence by being confident about the medium they're using. Fantastic. I know just for anybody that's looking for inspiration, there's all kinds of things you could do with that. I know um, in our combined teams that we work together in partnership, we're going to do a, a healthy hormone, happy, healthy hormone one. So we'll talk about plast. I mean, there's so many things in women that you can talk, but there's all kinds, you know, there's sports products. You, Impact Plus would be a great one to do with that. So Absolutely. probably, yeah, that it'd be such, such a great forum. Um, I'm looking forward to exploring it and we'll share our learnings. <laughs> well, you know, you can ask people, sorry, just an idea. I'm sorry, that's me. My brain goes at 90 miles an hour. It's like, um, you can say the first people who like this product will go their names into a drawer because I've got three to give away. It's all about engagement and interaction and getting activity and having fun at the same time and not mm. to be scared of the medium. No, fantastic. So I'm glad that you brought that to us. It's, um, it's great. And you spoke, you, you also started in reaching out in the um, general community when we're out with all our fishing lines in the pond and all our feelers out there to see who, you know, my focus is always that somebody's um, praying for us today. You know, there's always someone out there praying for the solutions that we have, whichever one is right for them. Mm -hmm. You spoke about really a focus of starting with customers and getting a, a, a customer base primary before you transition to business partners. Is that for new people or across the board or can you expand on that? Well, I guess um, that's a personal perspective and, um, Chris and I have had several discussions. Chris Simons and I have had several discussions on this very topic. But to me, the passion and the commitment comes from actually using the product, being, um, you know, what a product of the product. And then people want to know what you're on, what you're doing. And if you're actually focused on helping someone with their health, um, to me, that's an immediate connection. And that's a great opportunity we have to reach out to the community. So I see that as an opportunity to have a fantastic customer base and then out of that customer base, um, then start promoting, well, look, you're, you've got good health or it's, you know, you're enjoying what you're doing. Now think of the other product that we have, which is the, the business platform, the compensation plan. I'm coming from, and again, I'm being completely um, transparent here, a platform where if people hit me with a business opportunity first, I get a bit sensitive to it. Um, I've been in the industry long enough to have been targeted by many people. Um, some can be aggressively um, focused on making, you know, oh, I say putting it, making you feel uncomfortable. I guess that's the words I want to use. But if I think somebody cares about me or is actually got my um, interests at heart, 
uh, whether it's creating a, an ambience in the home, whether it's uh, capturing my life stories, and I'm hinting on a couple of my last career positions, or now interested in my health and well-being, I'm building a relationship with that person. Um, and to me, it's about the people relationships that will sustain the business long term. So, uh, you know, you have uh, a, a group of customers that are, you are taking care of. You've got your personal PV organized anyway, and then you're not going to be worrying about that month end um, or, you know, making sure that as then as you start on the business journey, where is my personal PV coming from? Look, I'm new, I'm learning, um, and I'm, I'm still willing to take on board differences of opinions, but I guess um, that's the platform I'm coming from at this point in time. Yeah, I, th I think that's quite a solid recommendation, especially, number one, for new people that may not have the posture on the business quite there yet. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, I think unless someone's coming to you and in, in the conversation, it's obviously that it's money that is they're, they're looking for. Mm -hmm. And then you can go straight to, you know, do you keep your options open for looking for extra income? Um, I, I, I understand why you're saying that. Sorry, Sharon. I guess, too, that um, if we look at the wider community um, and with respect to women um, in the home who possibly, uh, and I guess that's where the majority of the, the platform is, um, looking for income, looking to support the family, they're not always the most confident. You know, they've been out of the workforce for a while. They don't feel that they have the skill set, although they do, to talk to people and to build a business. And I believe that taking them on a journey um, and building their, their confidence, building their self-belief that they can run a business means that you're going to have someone with you long-term, not short-term, that comes in, and again, I think, unfortunately, quite often we say, oh, it's so, um, it's so easy. You know, you can do this, this and this. It's an easy. I don't think this business is easy. I think it's simple if you follow the platform, but it's not always easy. You know, sometimes there are speed bumps that come along the way. But if you promise too early that it's going to be easy, as soon as you hit one of those speed bumps, you know, people go, no, no, I'm, I'm going to give it up. So it's about taking people on a gradual journey of self-development learning and um, a skill set uh, that enables them to end up running a multi-million dollar business um, and then celebrating them with them on stage because you've seen somebody, um, you know, who's gone from a shy retiring rosebud to a full-blown rose. And I'm using that as an example, but that's mm -hmm. what inspires me every day, seeing personal development as well as business success. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, people have to think that even starting a new job or anything you're going to start new, there's a learning curve, isn't it? And you need to dedicate your time and your commitment to being the best you can be or learning the skills. Yeah. And a key success uh, element in our industry more than any other is that everyone that uh, is enrolled in the business needs to be supported. That's the way the downline is structured, that you enroll someone, you are there for them, you encourage them and you support them. It's not about just enrolling them and then moving on to the next person. I think um, the strength comes from building that community within a community. And as you can see, I'm very passionate about that. I keep using the word, but to me, that's the strength and the bond that's the glue that holds um, a team together and then it holds the company together as well. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, you go and join a company and they give you a desk and a, and a you know, a corner position and you're probably left um, to some degree on, on your own for a while. The success of our business is actually supporting and encouraging and helping everyone that we bring into the business. Absolutely. Absolutely. So there's a couple of questions coming in. Do you know um, how quickly you'll be able to publish uh, the tour cities where the regions that uh, JP Costa will be going? Um, yes. I'm just working with, um, Olivia on that at the moment and uh, you know we've actually got acknowledgement that Chris is coming over we're working on Chris oh I'm sorry JP <laughs> sorry slip of the tongue there um, that's another visit um, <laughs> on JP's visa and Olivia's working on a schedule and it looks as though we can um, cover the major cities in the region um, so uh, maybe even on the uh, leadership call on uh, this week coming up we'll be able to publish dates and then the leaders can um, pass that information through to their downline. Fantastic. That'll be, and even um, 
re, uh, that I think that'll give that was Rachel that asked that question. I'll give her a heads up. So like the capital city is probably the typically typical tour city. So, and yeah. it won't be too long till it's confirmed. So yeah. thanks for that question, Rachel. Okay. And um, is there any is what is JP going to focus on? Is it going to be business development or? I think possibly, um, you know, we need to hear JP's story. Um, he has had a great, uh, well, I was going to say business platform, great growth. He's a um, young guy full of energy and excitement and passionate about the business. And there's some things I think that he is doing that I'm very interested in um, replicating here. So I think it's more uh, understanding that, um, you know, it doesn't matter who you are, where you are, if you're passionate about the business and uh, focused, you can build a really strong business platform. And what we'll do is underpin that with, you know, um, education on the comp plan and some of the key elements from, from Saturday so that we have a rounded um, opportunity. Again, a 360 uh, stance on the company for our audience. So, um, you know, I'm hoping that um, our associates really support the event and we, we get, um, you know, huge, huge numbers there. It would be amazing. And that gives me the opportunity to meet and greet a few more people as well. So. Yeah, I'll work just for everybody. There's going to be people that uh, haven't had the opportunity to meet JPL work to get, see if I can get a time um, in the lead up so people can have sort of a hint of who he is and that, that, what we find is that usually makes people assist them in being more confident and inviting if they're really clear on what the, what they're going to experience on the day. So I'd like to publish his bio, a like a bio of his, um, once we um, consolidate some um, events and locations and he will be a VIP speaker. Absolutely. Yeah. He's awesome. He's really, it's a, don't, be, don't miss it. Um, and also Lily's inquiring about your upcoming trip to uh, Wellington. Yes. And she's just inquiring as the format for your meeting there, would it be appropriate for prospective partners or customers to be there? Look, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to meet and greet anybody. I, I guess if I just reach out and say the opportunity for me for the meet and greet is to um, get to know um, as many people as I can for them to get to know me. And I guess with the position I've been given, um, I would like to create the vision of where I see uh, Manatech going in the future, how we're going to get there, and about working in partnership. And for that to happen, people need to feel comfortable with who I am and feel that they can work with me as well. And um, so, yeah, I think if uh, we can create that energy in the room of, you know, where to from here, this is exciting, um, I'm excited. Uh, let's do this together, then why not have guests there? I, I think that would be amazing. And if they decide to join, well, that's a good outcome as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, surrounding that to maximize the time in each city, I've uh, coordinated to some gaps where I can meet people on a one-to-one. -one. Now, to me, with respect uh, to our New Zealand contingent, that's not just a coffee chat. I'm keen to sit down and look at... Um, a 30, 60, 90 day business plan. What does the person I'm uh, having the opportunity to sit with want from the business? What initiatives can they put in place? What can we do together to get the business moving? So it really is a business planning, um, 45 minutes to one hour. And I'll free up as much of my time as I can to meet as many. I think on the last uh, round trip, Brisbane, um, Melbourne and Adelaide, we had 17 one-on-one -on -one appointments. So um, I felt that that was really value add on top of the two hour meet and greet. Yeah, no, it was fantastic. And I think everybody, um, I think it's important to those relationships because it builds trust, doesn't it, Jenny? And then when trust is there, they can just go all out and go, right, well, that speed bump was passed, we're onwards and upwards. <laughs> yeah, look, um, I guess what I want to be able to do is to connect. I mean, am I always going to get everything right? Absolutely not. Am I going to make mistakes? You bet. Um, but I'm going to be trying to do the best I can. I'm not going to be sitting in the office thinking, oh my goodness, what can I do today to upset the, you know, the associates or the leaders? Um, but we need to get to that place where there's a sense of trust that, uh, you know, um, 
as I say, I don't know how long I can use that I'm the new guy on the block uh, excuse for not getting it right, but I'm going to be trying hard to um, achieve what I believe can be achieved uh, and probably be making some mistakes on the way. And if I've connected with a wider audience, hopefully I'll be forgiven for some of them, maybe not all of them, but some of them anyway. We're um, really um, forgiving in Manitech. I hope so. <laughs> well, we've been through a lot and, you know, you know, for people like on average, it's nine years for customers on automatic order. And yeah. some of us have been here since the beginning of Manitech in here. And we've been through so many waves and hurricanes and, you yeah. know, breakthroughs and um, we're still here. And again, it's not, it's not only the um, technology, which is goes without saying, but also I think the mission, yes. I think we're mission driven in Manitech yeah. and, um, it is true that people are praying for what we have and we need to be the best stewards possible in getting the message out. Well, that was the other thing. As when you say the mission, what jumped into my mind then was the M5M. I think, uh, you know, the other element that has um, driven uh, my career is the opportunity uh, to make a difference in the community. And I'm sure, well, the audience, uh, well, here and have heard that um, at Creative Memories, you know, making um, albums, we were able to support the Alzheimer's Association because that's a key element of working um, in that arena. And then my last uh, role was the Children's Hospital Foundation Australia. Um, and when you're actually able to do what you do and enjoy it and know that um, an element of the community are benefiting as well, um, is a very strong driver. And then when I read about M5M, I thought, oh my goodness, again, this is something I feel that we can maximize and we can promote. Um, I don't know that we promote it here as much as we could and should. I think that's an important element of what people want to feel value add today. And I'd love to see um, going forward, I'm already thinking about what could we do to support the children who in the disadvantaged areas of Australia through something like M5M. So, you know, that's another element that makes Manatech very special. So yeah. um, bring it on, she says. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Bring back those manavers too. <laughs> oh my goodness. You're going to hear some very good news soon. Oh, oh good. Oh. <laughs> that's good. Um, there was an, oh, another question is, I know um, it wasn't your first priority, but when will Singapore be fit into the schedule for you to Look, connect? I, I don't want to leave Singapore out of the mix, obviously, because I've been put in charge of the region. <clears throat> but, um, and again, in all transparency, I believe that the Singapore market has been, um, had a lot of promises and because of challenges within the business platform, perhaps they haven't happened as soon as, uh, the hierarchy would have liked it to have happened. So uh, I'm hoping that by the time we can get into Singapore, whether it's the end of the year with the um, JP Costa Roadshow or beginning of the earlier next year, that I can go and not uh, over promise and under deliver. That's what I want to say. I'd love to be able to m meet a very special group and that's the people of Singapore. Um, have some training, have some structure, and have some good news to share. So I haven't really answered your question, Sharon. I've probably given you a reason why I'm delaying that visit. Um, I would like to set up, I'm probably going to set up a Zoom call so that um, we can actually focus on that group and um, have a Q&A session to make sure that, that they feel um, included and not excluded. I guess um, that, that's an important element. Um, but you know what, the challenges are, are real um, and I need to try and minimize the challenges they're facing so that they uh, can experience the service and um, all the elements that we are providing into Australia and New Zealand that are successful or help them be successful. So yes, I've got a shopping list, Sharon, of things I think would make a difference for that market. Oh, fantastic. I'm sure they'll be happy to hear that. And this call will go far and wide so um, people can hear from you directly for people that are unable or unavailable on Saturday mornings. Um, this is a question you might not know, but I know we've had a few phases of changes to the comp plan. Do you know if the most recent details are um, on, in our WIP back office now, the most recent change? As in the Team 2, Team 4? Yes, and um, 
there was one other team two team four and then the what was the bonus yes the bonus yes well um i would like actually i'd like to take that on notice sharon um because i don't want to miss uh misguide anybody i mean i've been promoting that and i'm really excited about what i see with the comp plan having compared um the uh existing comp plan to others that I know in the marketplace. I can understand why uh, we now have this uh, platform. It's uh, loaded at the front end to encourage um, new enrollments and startups, and then the um, mm. reward will come as business growth. But to your point, when you said the back office, you mean that the system is supporting the bonus? So in the library, um, I think it's hard sometimes for um, it's hard to tell what version something is, whether it's the most recent version. Can I take that one on notice and Certainly. I'll investigate that? Um, and maybe I can feed back the answer to this question on the leader call on Thursday. I would like to think it is, uh, and if it isn't, then we need to make sure that you know our library is um, current. So um, that's one thing I will make a note of and and investigate as soon as I get into the office. Okay. I won't forget. Yeah, that's okay. I won't forget that one. Okay. I know I'm sort of anal about the, the library and knowing versions, so I really appreciate They've got a little red bubble lately, um, I can, this year anyway, um, which I'm very appreciative because they can, it says new. So, um, <laughs> But I do have trouble looking at the dates and knowing what, in um, determining what's the most recent version. Right. Now, another question in regards to convention, uh, you've secured the, lo the area and you've secured the date, which I think is the second one in February, is it? It's the end of February, 22nd, I think, isn't it? Um, 22nd is a Wednesday. I put it in my diary, so I'll find while, uh, while you're... Okay. But um, what's your vision for our convention? I know it's going to be somewhere in the Gold Coast region, is it? Yes, it's it Queen is. Southeast Queensland? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And I'm interested um, and passionate about bringing a different platform to uh, to conference, doing some things that um, you haven't done before, probably making it a bit longer, uh, with some key initiatives wrapped around it. Now, I am smiling and I'm hesitating at the same time, because what I would love to do at the MBA weekend, which is only a few weeks away, I can't believe it, that will be the next big gig coming back from New Zealand, is actually roll out why we're doing what we're doing and the impact of that, uh, and then we'll take it to the wider audience because every time you make a change, it impacts something else. But all I'm going to say is I want it to be more exciting with uh, lots of recognition, uh, lots of fun and um, time for key learning, keynote learning. <laughs> Can I get away with that one? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds uh, suitably mysterious. <laughs> So everybody get the brave boots on, their fun boots on. Oh, there we go. Karen Stacy, 21st to the 23rd of Feb. Thank you. Okay, yeah. perfect. And that's um, going to so quickly. Another um, question, this is logistical as well, and in the marketing arena. Um, do you know of any plans uh, formalized to update our storybook? It you know, is, we've, it is, is updated. It? Um, well, it, um, my success, uh, we've just launched... Um, I gave copies out at um, the uh, event on Saturday, um, Start With Success booklet that um, I worked on quite industriously. My first big job when I arrived was landed on my desk um, and that's now going into um, the, the kits and uh, we've sent some complimentary um, ones out to senior leader levels and the My Story, which has the correct me if I'm wrong, the aloe plant on the front. We're now doing, that's my next one, and that needs to be updated with the product, and we'll be getting that into the kits as soon as possible. So, um, Okay, so the business success guide is done and currently in distribution? Yes. And Irene, so the product one is next on the... On the and I need to get that out because, yes, that's really behind the eighth wall. But the other one I was really excited to, sorry, I'm taking the lead here, um, to finalise and really push the button on getting a hard copy because that was a bit of a challenge, was the Celebrate magazine. Mm. And um, to me, um, I'm still the girl that loves a hard copy. And uh, to me, the Celebrate magazine, to get that out first to the leader team 
and then it's going to be available um, to purchase hard copy. I see that as a great tool to connect people with, again, the Manatech business on a, on a whole as an enrollment tool. So, um, you know, there's a couple of good key publications I think we've been able to get out in the last week or so that I'm really excited about and the opportunity to utilize more. Yeah, there a lot of hard work goes into developing those. So you, you've got a, a micro team working very hard there, I reckon. I'm very proud of the team. They, you know, they are all um, working very hard. It is a small team and they're all committed to uh, supporting the field. And, uh, you know, um, I know I've got Jason on the, uh, the line you mentioned, but Jason and his team are working industrially. To me, um, Jason and his team are one of the most important teams in the company because they are the bridge between uh, the company and the field and with our customers. And Jason has taken the lead and training the team every week. And uh, I'm sitting, my, I've taken the office right by the team so that we can work together. Um, we need to be the best that we can be. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think we can all see that coming together, together beautifully. Mm -hmm. um, yep. So there's, um, there's so much, I'll try and copy all the comments for you. There's so much good news in there and, and gratitude for you. So I'll make sure you get a uh, chance to see that. But I think, um, is there anything that I've missed that you'd like to highlight today, Jenny? Um, no, I think we've had a real good general uh, chat session, Sharon. I guess um, I'm hoping uh, my uh, excitement is the word I want to use, or enthusiasm has come through. You know, I, um, I, I don't take on a position. It's not a job for me. And I guess that's how I'd like to validate our chat this morning. And that's what I wanted to validate at the um, meet and greet meetings. Um, you know, with um, last, my last role I was in for 13 years, and the role before that, seven years, is not to me just a job. It's a commitment to um, engage, to be part of the community. And that's probably one thing I missed when I said goodbye to the last um, team. It was the community we built that I missed. And I want to be able to recreate and build that. It, to me, it's um, I've had the opportunity to be in this industry you know, most of my career. Um, it, it gets in your blood, I think. But, you know, to be a part of Manatech now and give people the opportunity to, when I say ordinary, I, I use this word a couple of times, there's no such thing as an ordinary person, but we give people leading ordinary lives the opportunity to lead extraordinary lives through a great product, a, a great compensation plan, and uh, a community working together and that's what empowers me and you know um am i now retiring no I'm, <laughs> i want to see some exciting success before i hang up my car keys so down the track this is going to be gray hair and i don't know <laughs> I'm to see. oh no 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 we'll be using you <laughs> <laughs> so i'm excited um and i appreciate the opportunity to get out i believe i need to get out from behind the desk and meet as many people as possible. You can't make key decisions uh, without understanding the people. You can't make key decisions without knowing what's needed in the field. So it's not about being isolated in an office and getting other people to feed you information. It's actually getting that there and understanding it yourself. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing, traveling around the country, getting to meet as many people as possible. Uh, it's so greatly appreciated. And so, Jenny, just to complete, what, how important is our mission, our business, our technology for the world today? How, how, how important is it for us to be the best we can be to get this message out there? I know you've seen so many lives transformed in your career. Yes, um, but not through health and wellness. Um, and I have actually reached out to some of um, my colleagues and friends past communities because um, I'm seeing um, being involved in the community as I am widespread that there's a greater need for people to take care of their health. Um, children are getting sicker sooner. Um, there's a higher ratio of children being born um, not as healthy as they, they could be and um, you know at the other end of the scale we're living longer 
and and health and nutrition is key so is you know is what we're doing important absolutely and we've got one of the key products that um uh can make a difference in so many ways um why shouldn't we be the best why shouldn't we be the greatest and to me if that is the focus first then the money will come if we care about our people um the money's going to come anyway in the back door and um, will we be back at i don't know 50 60 million business absolutely and what does that mean everybody's got an income uh, to say sustain and support their lifestyle so i i'm a great believer in you know what you give um you receive so we give good health and we'll receive financial independence i i'm sorry but that's just what i believe in no need to apologize for that jenny god bless you thank you so very much for being generous today with your time and your heart your experience your passion thank you my pleasure and i wish everyone continued success Thank you, Jenny. And so ladies and gentlemen, next week, as I said, um, is Robin Sully. It's going to be uh, a patient, a patient, I've got to switch back to my nursing time, uh, client-based, customer-based uh, education. So it'll be perfect for guests as well. We're talking about being successful and why our technology is what should be the foundation for anybody's wellness program. So Jenny, thank you so very much. God bless you. Have a great weekend. See you, everybody. Bye. Bye for now.